Hello friends, welcome and welcome back to our channel entranceadvisor.com. In this lecture 2, I will be continuing the chapter 12 biology that is the chapter evolution and the unit is 7. So let's begin. If you are new to this channel, please hit the bell icon and do subscribe to our channel. So in this, I'll be talking about the rest of the part which is left and starting with the biological evolution. So evolution by natural selection is a true sense which would have started uh, when cellular forms of life with differences in metabolic capability originated on the earth. So the essence of Darwinian theory about the evolution is natural selection. The rate of appearance of new forms is linked to the life cycle or lifespan. Microbes that divide fast have the ability to multiply and become the millions of individuals within hours. A colony of bacteria growing on a given medium has uh, different as built in variation in terms of ability to utilize a feed component. A change in the medium composition would bring out only that part of the population that can survive under new conditions. In the due course of time, this variant population outgrows the others and appears as new species. This would happen within the days. For the same thing to happen in a fish or a fowl would take millions of years as lifespans of these animals are in years. Here we say that the fitness of B and in the, the is better than and than of a under certain conditions or, or the new conditions the nature selects for the fitness so one must remember that the so-called fitness is based on the characteristics which are inherited hence there must be a genetic basis for getting selected and to evolve another way of saying the same thing is that some organisms are better adapted to survive in an otherwise hostile environment. Adaptive ability is inherited. So it has certain benefits. Fitness is the end result of the ability to adapt and get selected by nature. So natural selection is the essence of Darwinian theory for the evolution. The rate of appearance of the new forms is related to the life cycle or lifespan as I've said. For variations to get selected and evolve, there have to be a genetic basis, obviously. The organisms with the favorable variations are better adapted in nature than in a hostile environment. So, variations result in adaptability and this is known as adapted radiation. And they have a genetic basis and therefore, it must be inherited. So, fitness is the ability to adapt to the changing environment and thus get selected by the nature. Branching descendant and natural selection or the two key com com components or the con concepts of the Darwinian theory of the evolution. So, uh, the key components or the concepts of the Darwin are the natural selection, the survival of the fittest by the nature in the face of the changing environment and the theory of the common descent. As I've said, the organisms are descended from common ancestors due to the accumulations of variations only. So even before Darwin, a French uh, scientist or naturalist Lamarck has said that the evolution of life forms has occurred but driven by the use and disuse of organs. He gave the examples of giraffes who in an attempt to forage leaves on tall trees had to adopt by elongation of their necks. So as they passed on this awkward character to elongate a net, to succeeding generations, the rough slowly over the years came to acquire long necks. Nobody believes in this conjecture anymore, though. So, the Lamarckism theory, what does it state? The theory of inheritance of acquired characters. French naturalist Lamarck proposed that the evolution of life forms due to the use of the disuse of the organs. So, which organs which were used hence evolved and which were not used were extinct where it became extinct okay he explained this theory using the giraffes as an example as i've claimed he claimed that the giraffe forms long necks in an attempt to forage the leaves on therefore this character was acquired best on the new to adopt and survive the acquired characters was passed to the succeeding generations and therefore came to develop 
they will have long necks slowly over the millions of years so this is the question to you there is evolution process or the result of a process which one the world we see manimate inanimate and animate is only the success stories of evolution only when we describe the story of this world we describe the evolution as the process on the other hand we describe the story of the life on the earth we treat evolution as a consequence of a process called the natural selection so we are still not very clear whether to regard evolution as a natural selection as a process or the end result of the unknown process so i can say that towards the end of the 18th century biologists and astronomers had come to the conclusion that life also evolved along with the evolution of the earth french biologist lamarck was the only real pre-darwinian advocate of the evolution he arranged the then known fossils in the chronological order from the older to recent ones and compared the latter with the contemporary forms lamarck could find a number of lineages or lines of descent so he concluded that the adaptation developed in response to the environment and so does the ability of the uh, organisms to respond to the same adaptations were a means of the evolution modification so i can describe the lamarckism in a more detailed way so uh, mechanism of evolution hugo de veres based on his work on the evening primrose brought the fourth idea of the mutation mutation is a large difference arising suddenly in a population so mutations are random and directionless while darwin variations are small and directional hugo de veres believed that the mutation causes speciation and hence called saltation single state large mutation so mechanisms of evolution i will come to that but uh let me describe the uh, lamarckism a little bit more uh, so it is the first theory of the evolution proposed by de lamarck jean baptiste de lamarck in 1801 and 1809 which proposes that the organisms undergo certain changes for adapting themselves to the environment and the characters thus acquired are passed on to the next generation so lamarckism is a popularly called the theory of inheritance of acquired characters as well as the theory of use and disuse of organs make it clear very clear in your mind so lamarck also coined the terms of biology and invertebrates besides the founding of the groups of annelida archaenida and crustacea the important features of the lamarckism are there are three important features which are one number one the internal vital force it tends to change the size and the form of different organisms generally making them larger and more complex uh, second one uh, is environment there is fitness of design whereby the each organism is perfectly adapted to its environment so a change in the environment brings about the changes in the plants and some animals directly as in a giraffe so in the other animals having a brain a change in the environment produces new needs new needs what are new needs new needs produce a new movement in the body that brings about modification of the existing organs and formation of the new ones it is also known as doctoring and desires of appetency the use and disuse of organs constant use of organ makes it more efficient and specialized so disuse of an organ brings about its degeneration as i've said it will extend or it it is lost in the course of time inheritance of acquired characters the trait acquired due to the internal vital force change in the environment new needs use and disuse of organs are passed on to the next generation only after several generations it give rise to a new species with new features new variations new genes new differences okay new traits and apart from this giraffe example you can also conclude the example of some aquatic birds stretch their toes and develop waves well developed biceps of a blacksmith are a result of greater use pinna muscles of the rabbit are well developed similarly because of requirement of moving the pinna and uh, in a different directions for collection of sound waves retractile claws of an carnivores develop due to the darkness so snakes lose their limbs and develop long bodies due to the creeping in the narrow burrows or for the avoiding enemies and cave dwellers lost their eyesight due to the living in constant darkness 
So flat fishes are the normal fishes with streamlined body and lateral lies in the early embryonic stage but become flat with the eyes on the other side in the latter stages for living at the bottom and resting on the other side. And uh, lastly, the ancestors of the flightless birds are like kiwi were normal birds with the power to fly. Lesser and lesser degree making the wing less vestige, uh, vestigial ult ultimately. So deer became very fast runners on the advent of the carnivorous mammals by the development of the long limbs and streamlined body. In the amphibious plants or the emergent hydrophytes, the submerged leaves are dissected to provide little resistance to the water while the emerged leaves were undissected. So these are the few examples you uh, may find these examples in, over internet and in other books, reference books, not in the entirety. So for, for the neat preparations, you may go through this. So coming to the second topic, mechanism of evolution. How, what was the process behind the evolution? So what is the origin of this variation and how does the speciation occur? Even though the Mendel had talked of inheritable factors of influencing phenotypes, Darwin either ignored these observations and or kept the silence. In the first decade of the 20th century, Hugo de Veres on his work on evening primrose brought forth this idea of the mutation. So large difference arising suddenly in the population. He believed that it is the mutation which causes evolution and not the minor variations that were heritable that the Darwin talked about. And the mutations are random and directionless while Darwinian variations are small and directional. So, evolution for Darwin was gradual while Hugo de Veres believed the mutation caused speciation and hence it is called saltation, the single step large mutation. So, studies in the population genetics later brought out some clarity. So, there were some criticism regarding these formulas, these theories. So, Hugo de Veres theory differs from the Darwinian theory of the natural selection. As I have said, he stated that the mutation causes the evolution and not the minor variations. Okay, the mutations are sudden, random and directionless. It Anything can happen. You know, mutations are just random. While the Darwinian variation are small and directional. Uh, we know what is going to happen. We can predict. But in mutation, we cannot predict anything. The evolution according to Darwin was slow and gradual. But Mutation is quite fast and hence led to the speciation. The, he therefore called it saltation and saltation it is a large and an abrupt evolutionary change that has been brought about due to the sudden large scale mutation. So we can mm, see this through Darwinism and natural selection that the Darwinism or the theory of natural selection is a theory of organic evolution which states that new species evolved over a long period of time through the accumulation of various small variations which provide the organisms with structural and functional superiority over other in their survival and differential reproduction. So that was a certain difference which were uh, controversial though and let's move to the next slide. So we have came across various theories. So I must state the difference among the Lamarckism, Darwinism and mutation theory which the Hugo de Veres provided, okay? So, first property is the vital force. The theory believes that the, every organism has an internal vital force that tends to increase its size up to a certain limit. Got it? So, Darwinism does not believe in the internal vital force. So, mutation theory also, no internal force or vital force were involved. So, conscious reaction, the animals with a well-developed nervous system react consciously to any change in the environment. So Darwinism does not involve any consciousness reaction. Two, and in the mutation theory, no consciousness reaction is believed to take part in the process of the evolution. Appetency, the theory considers the appetency or the desires, sorry, on the part of the animals an important force in the development of the modification. So it is not a constitute of the theory. Darwinism does not support all these things, okay? And the appetence is not involved. It is more or less the same. But the difference, as I have told you, that the fast and the slow and the variation is in only directional cases only. You'll see that. And use and disuse the 
organs put to more use and believed to develop more while organs were not being to use degenerate lamarck said this okay and uh, uh, darwinism the theory is silent about uh, the use and disuse of organs this uh, darwinism either neither commented on this okay the theory is silent about it also the inheritance of acquired characters the characters acquired by an organism during its life are believed to get transferred the next generation according to the darwin all the living cells produce minute particles or the pangeases which pass into the germ cells for the transmission of the offspring so only those variations mutation theory states that are are transferred to the offspring which generate in the germ cells or in the cells which form germ cells the struggle for existence let's come to this the theory does not clearly spell out what there's a, what is the struggle for the existence mean and in relation to the high biotic potential and here he said about it organisms produce more offspring than available food and space so that the struggle for existence ensures among them it is quite a right thing i i believe that everybody will believe that the theory believes in the struggle for existence too the origin of the variations the variations appear in the organisms in response to change in the environment causes reactions desire use and disuse of the organs and uh, darwinism variations appear automatically and the variations appear due to the change in the genetic makeup Con continuous variations the theory is silent about it and uh, through though it believes in a continuous modification of organs in a particular direction okay it is based on the origin and the selection of the continuous variation the theory is based on the discontinuous variations or mutations natural selection the theory does not take into account natural selection or the survival of the fittest the darwinism is based on the natural selection or the survival of the fittest this is the most important thing and the mutation theory believes in the natural selection or the survival of the fittest too the progress of evolution the evolution is a continuous process which moves in a direction governed by the environment only and appetency so evolution is a continuous process the direction of its government with nature he said the same thing darwin was also uh, uh, same thing uh, he concluded concluded and uh, the evolution is a jerky process the direction which is unpredictable and though ultimately it is governed by the nature it, it is governed by the nature but mutation theory states that the direction we don't know in which direction is going to occur it is random okay but darwin said that it is not random it has a special direction and according to that it goes on and goes on the gene flows in that direction only but this is not in case of the mutation theory because the gene tends to change themselves in every second so oh, so now the most important principle known as the hardy winberg principle okay i'm coming to this do you know do you need more explanation about the mutation theory so if you need you can comment below in the box okay comment box and the hardy winberg principle i'm going to talk about this only so the raw material of evolution is the mutations as we know so if there are the important features of the mutation theory are the mutations and the new variations are called the elementary species by the way so mutations are not linked to any mean of average by the characters okay so it is a evolution is a jerky or discontinuous process because mutations are discontinuous and non directional as i have told you so objections were various objections were there various controversies are there you can read this from book but for neat this above chart is quite important and uh, i think it's enough so coming to the population genetics which is a different phase uh, regarding this principle during this in a population and un the unit of natural selection in the is the individual while unit of evolution is the population okay the natural selection unit is the individual but the evolution evolutions unit is the population because the population is what we can see right we can depend upon that so depending upon the magnitude evolution is of three types micro evolution macro evolution and mega evolution the terms micro evolution and the macro evolutions were given by the goldsmith 
okay while the term mega evolution by the gene mutations and the accumulation in the variation it is produces and by given were coined coined by the simpson so micro evolution is the evolution below the level of the species which is caused by the gene mutations and the accumulation of the variations it produces new varieties and the new subspecies and the macro evolution is that adaptive radiation which i talked about in which the new variations and the genera are formed due to the mutations radiation which involves major changes as in organization plan resulting in the formation of new families orders classes and phyla in all cases evolutions occur at the level of population the population or the mendelian population is a group of all individuals okay of the same species in which which occurs in the same area at a particular time and the share a common gene pool that is the most important and what is the gene pool gene pool is the sum total of all the genes and their alleles present in an inbreeding population so with the advent of the study of the population genetics the mechanism of evolution became clear more and more clear fisher in 1930 Right in 1931, Halden in 1932 contributed to the development of the modern synthesis of evolutions or the new Darwinism. So it stated that the unit of evolution is population, and the cause of evolution is the natural selection acting through the different reproduction, differential reproduction of individuals having the adaptable genetic variation. So. population genetics what is it is the study of the frequencies of different genes and tends to or tend of their change in the different conditions so gene frequency is the proportion of an allele in all the relations to all the total genes of a gene present in an interbreeding or the mendelian population so in 1908 g h hardy and w winberg independently proposed sexually producing individuals gene or allelic frequency remain constant from generation to generation okay irrespective of their phenotypic expression hardy winberg law or the principle has provided genetics genetics as a tool to determine whether a population is evolving or not okay this is done by comparing gene or the allele frequencies calculated some years back with the present day frequency okay it was compared the deviation indicates that a degree of evolution change the frequency of the particular allele is calculated by the equation p so p plus q equals to 1 and hence uh, squaring that we get p square plus 2 pq plus q square equals to 1 the percentage of the homologous recessive individuals q square is known as by sampling a large selection of population the frequency of different types of individuals as well as that of dominant allele is then calculated okay so in a given population frequency of occurrence of alleles or genes can be finding out these frequencies remain fixed and even remain the same throughout the generation to generation after generation this fact was represented by the hardy winberg principles by algebraic equation he said that the allele frequencies in a population are stable and constant from generation to generation the gene pool remains also constant this is called the genetic equilibrium and the sum total of all all allelic frequency is 1 so binomial expansion of the p square plus q square is p square plus 2 pq plus q square equals 1 where the p and q represent the frequency of the allele a and the allele small a in a population the frequency of capital a capital a individuals is a population is simply p square this is simply stated in another ways that is a probability test that an allele with the frequency of p appear on both chromosomes of a diploid individual is simply the product of the probability p square similarly capital small cause small is small a is the q square that is the homozygous recessive and capital is small a this is the heterozygous carrier hence p square plus 2 pq q square equals to 1 this is the main formula which is going to get you in the Uh, solving the mathematical problems regarding this so when the frequency is measured the actual value varies that it indicates the extent of the evolutionary changes change of the frequency in an allele hardy winberg equilibrium in a population resulted due to evolution so difference in the population of pq and pq indicate the extent of evolutionary change 
So disturbance in the genetic equilibrium, the Hardy Wilburn equilibrium or the change of the frequency of allele in a population can be interrupted, interpreted as an accumulation of change in the variation that results in evolution. So there are some disturbances, there are variations. There are some sources of variations. The sources of variations are like uh, mutations, pre-adoptive mutations and recombinations, gene flow, uh, founder effect, genetic drift, natural selection, bottleneck effect. We have discussed that uh, very little we have discussed about those in the previous chapter. Here we will be discussing a little more. So the factors that affect the Hardy-Winberg equilibrium. So first of all, the gene migration or the gene flow, then we will be coming about gene genetic drift, then the mutation, then the genetic recombination and at last the natural selection. So what is gene migration? When a selection of population migrates to another place, gene frequencies will change in the original as well as in the new population. The new genes alleles will be added to the new population and at the same time, a loss from the old population. So what is this? This is called the gene flow in, in, a, in a consequence. So what is the gene flow? When a gene migration occurs frequently, it is termed as gene flow. So it is also known as gene exchange. A species may have several populations. So entry or exit of the selection of population will result in the addition or loss of the alleles. So regular mixing of the population due to the migration Immigration and immigration decreases the differences between the separated populations and reduces the chances of the formation of the new species. However, an occasional migration of a section of population to the area of another population of the species will add new alleles to the same local gene pool. So, the phenomenon is the natural selection. A closely related species may also immigrate into the area causing the interspecific mating and producing fertile hybrids. Such hybrids could carry certain genes from species to species. So now coming to the uh, this topic, the genetic drift, change in the gene frequency that occurs due to random event or by chance. During the genetic drift, sometimes the allele uh, frequency changes is so different and is a sample of population that they become different species. The original drifted population becomes a founder and that effect is called the founder effect. It is the random change in the allele number and the frequency in a gene pool due to the chance that is the small size population. It is caused by the sampling error or the error in the gene pool sample that is to form the next generation. The sampling gene pool is generally small in size. Variability is also limited. It leads to the fixation of certain alleles and elimination of the others. Chance factor may increase the frequency. Okay. It leads to the fixation of certain alleles and elimination of others. The chance factor may increase the frequency of a trait which may or may not have the adaptive value. So, in a new habitat, the colony earths are generally few. The gene pool is extremely small. Okay. And the colonies are also called as founders. So, there is in increase in the inbreeding, decrease in heterozygosity and increase in the homozygosity so some alleles are eliminated just eliminated because some are lost and others become fixed so mutations produced entirely new alleles and genes this produces a different gene pool and a different population changes in the phenotypes forms a new species such a mechanism of speciation is called the founder effect. So as you came to know what the founder effect is, sometimes the change in the allelic frequency is so drastic and that in the new sample of population, the variants form a different species. The original drifted population form which the variants arose become founder species and this effect is called the founder effect. So certain species show some seasonal flux and crash in their population that is the mosquitoes house flies only a small population survives during unfavorable season or the crash period and the small size of the population brings about a shrinkage of the gene pool as the population grows in a size of a random genetic drift takes place reduction in allele frequencies during the brief reduction in size of population is called the bottleneck or the genetic bottleneck effect or it protects the organism from extinction only okay Let's move on. And uh, uh, 
regarding the natural selection i don't think there is much needed then also i'm explaining in darwinian terms the natural selection is a survival in the struggle for existence and in the reproductive success and the fetus for the surviving individuals in the modern terminology the natural selection is differential reproduction and differential contribution of the various phenotypes to the next generation it leads to the changes in the allele frequencies that promote adoption and the traits that promote non adaptive effects are kept under check in the struggle for existence the individuals with inferior and no adaptive genotypes are eliminated others switch better and adaptive genotypes survive so uh, some of them do not find uh, do not find mate others are more successful and produce maximum offspring the phenomenon and of finding mate and forming offspring with different degree of success is called the differential reproduction you know and so the most successful individuals carry certain alleles which are different from the others they contribute these alleles uh, to gene pool in the increasing number if the same type of uh, selection con continues the gene pool will also undergo a large scale changes a uh, change after several generations depending upon the traits favored in the particular environment so single species will come have different uh, types of populations in the different species it results in the evolution and uh, about the mutations i have told that they are permanent heritable changes in the genetic materials of the individuals mutations are caused by the changes in the chromosome number polyploidy or aneuploidy chromosome aberrations deletion duplication inversion translocation and the genes and the number of the sequence of the nucleotides the gene mutations produce new alleles sometimes new genes are also formed every gene can mutate through the very frequency is low 1 in 1 million so mm, mutations restore alleles that are removed by the evolutionary agents they create and maintain uh, variations within the population the new genes and the alleles are added into the gene pool so the mutations are thus raw material for the evolutionary change that accumulations over generations may bring about other large scale changes so very few mutations are useful most of them are neutral or harmful as well as recessive however with the change in the environment many neutral or even harmful mutations may become advantages so these mutations are also source of pre adaptations that are basic to natural selection so coming to the recombination genetic recombination i will talk about few lines uh, and or the gene recombination you must say there are the variations produced due to the coming together of the different alleles and the parts of the alleles of genes during the sexual reproduction in combination which does not exist in the parent so so the because of the recombinations no two individuals of a species are similar exception the monozygotic twins uh, gene recombinations occur due to the following reasons and uh, you know as the times of crossing over occurs between the gametes segment of gametes resulting in an formation of new alleles and uh, as well as the new genes and so the the combination by the adding new alleles genes and the combination of genes to the gene pool function as the agents of evolution by the crossing over separation of chromosomes or by the random union of the gametes all is encouraged so brief account of the evolution It's about 2000 million years ago first cellular form of life appeared on the earth slowly single celled organisms became multicellular forms and by the time 500 mya invertebrates were formed and active jawless fish evolved about 350 mya and the organisms started to invade from water to land the fish which stout and strong fins could move on the land and go back to the water these animals called low fins evolved into the first amphibians later these individuals evolved into reptiles they lay shelled eggs and then reptiles of different shapes and sizes dominated on the earth so fish like reptiles isosaurs and the land reptiles dinosaurs the biggest of them were triceratops x some of the reptiles evolved into the birds and later some of them to mammals mammals were very fearless and more intelligent in sensing and avoiding danger so this was a case study so a brief account of evolution as i said these were just repeated terms i will be not explaining about this about much 
because the biggest i have said about this and the mammals and become we become very ferocious and the lack of competition was the result of continental drift this is the term you need to remember only the for just competitive exams so coming to the operation of natural selection and how on it is operated on different traits and the natural selection can lead to stabilization in which more individuals acquire mean character value or the directional changes occurs when more individuals acquire value other than the mean character value that is the disruption and the that is the last one more individuals acquire peripheral character value at the both ends of the distribution curve so let's move on how it is uh done so you can see in the stabilizing selection this if the individuals close to the mean have the highest fitness and the mean does not change but the variation is decreased directional directional selection if the individuals at the one extreme has high fitness and there is evolutionary trend towards that extreme okay and the disruptive is the individuals at the both extremes have high fitness and the variation of the population is increased and the bimodal pattern may result if you want the three modes of selection along with the examples please comment below i will provide you that i will i will contact you okay or dm me in the instagram page please or for more details so this is the disruptive selection this is stabilizing selection and this is directional so in the peak gets higher and narrower in case of you know stabilizing and in case of directional the medium sized individuals are favored more because some uh, it is flowing the gene are flowing in a certain direction the peak shifts in one direction the phenotypes is favored by the natural selection and in the disruptive two peaks are favored either the very less or either the very high one okay so let's continue account of brief account of evolution this you can see in your ncert book only a sketch of the evolution of plant forms through the geological periods that is the silurian devonian carnivorous Uh, carboniferous permian triassic jurassic cretaceous tertiary quaternary so these are the time scales okay all these are written in your book you have to memorize it you can find some of the very useful videos in the youtube only for the mnemonics how to remember okay this helped me a lot okay those mnemonics and in this picture you can see the representative evolutionary history of the vertebrates through various geological that is the carboniferous permian triassic these are different era of the uh, dinosaurs you know and in this case you can see the turtles lizards snakes tortoises crocodiles birds all these evolved in this period you have to remember this it's very difficult i know but still you have to so the so, amphibians that lived on both land and water according to that no there were no specimens of the lives with us okay so however these were ancestors of modern day frogs and salamanders everything went out and amphibians evolved into reptiles so the origin at last i can say the origin and evolution of man about 15 mi primates such as diarrhopithecus and Ram ramapithecus existed they appeared to be the similar to the gorillas as chimpanzees and in appearance of the uh, walking and ramapithecus were more similar to the man whereas the diapithecus were more similar to the apes so few fossils of bones that resemble human bones that have discovered the ethiopia and the tanzania two myva australopithecus existed and they mostly most likely lived in the east african grasslands or they used the stone weapons for the hunting especially essentially they had a fruit based diet and the first human like organisms were the homo minid and were called the homo habilis the brain capacity was uh, like this only and uh, they also survived on the plant based diet and did not eat meat so the fossils discovered in java in 1891 seem to be the next stage of the homo erectus 
So they evolved about 15 mi and had a large brain with a brain capacity of 900 cc, probably 8 meat. So you can go through this, okay. If you want to explain or you or more details in more details, you just need to go through books only because only books can help you because uh, this is a part you you need you have to remember. So let's see. Nentralter Manor brain size was around fourteen hundred cc and lived in the east. So okay, and uh, lived in the east and central Asia and uh, around this years back and they developed use of animal hides to protect their body buried or dead okay they started this ritual and the homo sapiens the modern men arose in the africa and migrated across the continents and developed distinct races during the ice age years ago modern homo sapiens arose and the prehistoric cave art developed about 18,000 years ago agriculture came around around 10,000 years back and the human settlement started so here are the comparisons of the human skulls, adult human, baby chimpanzee and adult chimpanzee. You can compare this, okay? So, geological time scale is very much important. As well as this fossils history, which capacity were used to, by which man and the when and how the man evolved. So, it is evolved like this. The first human was the homo minute or the homo habilis then came homo erectus then came the neanderthal man then the homo sapiens so in this sequence you have to remember this okay so thanks for watching have a nice day